I was kind of under the impression when you only see members of your community on the internet and never in real life, you're kind of thinking, what if this is just like a group of like pink haired 13 year olds on Tumblr? Like you have no way to tell like what the community actually is, whether the people you see on the internet, whether that's like the whole demographic. Not only was I the only black girl in my class, but I was also the black kind of punky <laughs> girl in my class. And people would say that like, they'd call me weird and they'd call me a mosher and they'd call me a uh, coconut. So asexuality means experiencing little to no sexual attraction. So I like to describe it as being the sexual orientation that just isn't oriented anywhere. Um, so it is a spectrum like all of sexuality. So there are some asexual people who might experience sexual attraction very rarely. There are some that might never experience it. There are some asexual people that are would not engage in any kind of sexual activity. And there are some who would. Um, I happen to not experience romantic attraction either. I'm what they call aromantic, but there are asexual people who are, as we say, homoromantic or biromantic or heteromantic, and they still have romantic relationships and everything. So there is a whole wide range of asexual experiences out there. It wasn't really until I, probably like 2019, when I actually met other asexual people, like more than just the odd one person. And I saw like a large group of, the, of them at an asexuality conference. And I was like, this is literally like, you just picked random people off the street and put them in a room. Like I, I was kind of under the impression when you only see members of your community on the internet and never in real life, you're kind of thinking, what if this is just like a group of like pink haired 13 year olds on Tumblr? Like you have no way to tell like what the community actually is, whether the people you see on the internet, whether that's like the whole demographic. And in that sense, then I would have been like, well, is this a thing? But then when I saw that like the asexual community is literally just a whole bunch of normal people that have this one thing in common, there's no like pattern. And I was like, okay, like, I feel like I'm getting along with you guys. Like, this is just, this is kind of what I had hoped for. And I just wish that other people got to see the asexual community the way I did or the way people within the community get to see us because that's kind of how, that's kind of just like a great way to kind of debunk all those stereotypes and misconceptions that you're kind of taught about it. I don't think people really believed it until I was already doing my activism and it was printed in Metro newspaper with like the words, this is what asexual looks like with a three page spread of my face on it. That's when it was like, oh, Yasmin, you just came out. It's like, no, I told you it was five years ago. You just didn't believe me. But people believe what they read in the newspaper. So that was, I feel like that was when I properly successfully came out. I mean, being described as the face of asexuality is very, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's flattering. It's not a title I ever expected to have. Like, I guess the community saw something in me before I saw it in myself and and they just really kind of supported me and like amplified me and thought I would be a good person to kind of spread this message. And I, I think one positive to come out of it is I think it kind of challenges people's expectations about asexuality. So I've always been told that I don't look asexual, which kind of suggests to me that whatever people are picturing is kind of the opposite of me. I feel like people kind of picture more of like a Sheldon Cooper kind of vibe. Um, just someone who they expect you to be very kind of awkward and very shy and kind of unable to socialize properly. And people think if you don't experience sexual attraction to other people, then you must be like a black hole of sexual attractiveness. Like there must be, you must be like repelling that. You must, no one should ever find there to be anything interesting about you. So especially being a model, I think people find it kind of harder to wrap their heads around. And they definitely don't seem to picture black people, particularly black women as being asexual. And then I kind of had a weird experience in the media where I kind of saw the ways that the media was very eager to kind of represent the asexual community as being very like unfortunate, like these strange aliens trying to struggling to function in our society. And that's when I was kind of like, I feel like we should speak out about this. I feel like we should try and shift this narrative and like take the agency back. And I feel like that kind of lit a fire under me to talk about things more. And at the same time, people started taking an interest. And then when I finished my master's degree, I thought, why not do this more often now that I have the time? I've experienced so much, <laughs> so much like kind of like 
ace phobia that it's kind of hard to even pinpoint which one would be like the worst example because it's weird because when you kind of get it i get it online and then there are sometimes where you do get it in real life people theorize like oh well you probably just got molested as a kid or you're probably just evil and heartless and all those kind of things you kind of get those stereotypes and then in real life i feel like it's always really daunting especially like as a woman you get an instance where like guys will like hit on you and sometimes Usually I kind of try and dodge the subject, but sometimes I do try and like say, actually, I'm asexual. It's nothing to do with you. It's not a reflection of you. This isn't going to happen. And I have had instances where guys have gotten pretty like mad about it. But most of the ace phobia I get is online. And unfortunately, a fair chunk of it comes from within the um, LGBTQ plus community, unfortunately. I'll be like, yeah, I had a great time at Pride. or had a great time speaking at this Pride event where I'll suddenly get people being like, you're not supposed to be there. Why do you think you can be there? And it's like, people think that like you're anti-sexuality and you're gonna come in there and say, stop talking about sex. Stop being proud of your sexuality. It's like, stop doing everything. We're gonna like ruin it. Um, but in reality, like you can be sex positive and asexual and we're just there to kind of feel empowered like everybody else. I get a lot of messages from people who will say like, oh yeah, just seeing that article you did in the newspaper, I like discreetly handed that to my grandmother. <laughs> and now like we ask kind of like change things for us or that made me feel comfortable talking about this to people or helped my family to understand or helped me to feel more comfortable in myself. And I particularly get that from like black asexual people who are like, I didn't really feel like I really fit, but then seeing you in this community is like made me feel more kind of like comfortable and more represented. So things like that are kind of like the highlights for me. I want this award to convey that the asexual community is part of the LGBTQIA plus community and we're here to stay and we're not a threat. We're not here to ruin anything. We're not a danger. Asexual activists have, have existed for a really long time, but I can't think of an instance ever where an asexual activist has been nominated or considered or won anything like this before. So this is, I feel like a pretty pivotal moment and a great way to kind of exemplify asexual inclusion within the LGBTQ plus community, because for some reason that is a contentious topic. And I feel like this makes a pretty cool statement. So I feel like this is definitely my uh, proudest achievement and not something I saw coming. <laughs>